So, welcome back to the uh, lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and this is lecture number 19 and today we will continue our discussion on maxima and minima of functions of two variables and in particular today we will see some uh, typical uh, problems where we will apply the idea which was discussed already in previous lectures. So, just to recall in the last lecture we have uh, investigated the local extrema and that was the sufficient conditions and necessary conditions. So, we need to find first uh, all the critical points and those critical points uh, we will get by solving these equations. So, the partial derivative of f with respect to x will be set to 0 and partial derivative of uh, f with respect to y will be set to 0 and then we will solve these two equations to get all the points which satisfy uh, these equations. So, those will be the critical points and then for each critical point we will evaluate uh, this is the notation r we have used for the second derivative with respect to x at each critical point and then s here the mixed derivative and t which is the uh, 2 times y derivative of this uh, function f. And then for the identification we have uh, realized that if this r t minus s is square. So, r t and minus s is square this is positive and this r is negative then we have the uh, point of uh, maximum and if at a point if we have again this r t minus s is square positive and r is positive then this is a point of minimum. Similarly, when this is negative r t minus s is square then this uh, comes out to be a saddle point and if this r t minus s is square is 0 then this test of the second derivatives uh, this fails and we need to go for further investigation by some other ways. So, let us discuss the problem here. So, we want to find the local extrema of the function f x y is equal to 4 x square plus y square multiplied by e power minus x square minus 4 y square. So, we need to compute the f x. So, f x is simply uh, if we uh, differentiate this with respect to x uh, keeping y constant. So, we will have this first term let us keep it as it is the product rule and then here we will differentiate. So, e power minus x square and minus 4 y square and then the derivative of this minus x square minus 4 y square which will be minus uh, 2 x with respect to x and then plus. So, here this is 8 x the derivative of this first term 8 x and then here e power minus x square minus 4 y square and then this term we can take common with this x here. And in fact, this 2 x we can take common and e power minus x square minus 4 y square. Then from this first term we will get uh, this 4 x square and minus y square. So, with minus sign because there was minus there and then here we have taken already 2 uh, times x and this uh, exponential function. So, we will get simply 4 here. So, that is the first derivative of this function with respect to x which is written here. So, 2 x and this exponential function 4 minus 4 x square minus y square. Similarly, we can get the uh, first order derivative with respect to y. So, in now we will differentiate here with respect to y and again the product root uh, will be applicable. So, we will get this uh, 2 times y now and here uh, the same exponential function and that the extra term 1 minus 16 x square minus 4 y square. And the critical points we can now get by solving these two equations. So, if we uh, set these equations to 0 in that case we will get from this first equation because exponential cannot be 0. So, either x has to be 0 or this uh, term in this uh, bracket uh, has to be 0. So, let us assume that x is 0. So, when x is 0 f x at uh, whatever point along this uh, x is equal to 0 for whatever y this will be 0. So, we have x is equal to 0 there which can uh, set to this f x uh, 0 and now when x is 0. So, from here we get 
two possibilities to make this term 0 either y will be 0 in that case also this term will be 0 or here when we set x to 0 we are getting this 1 minus 16 x square uh, 1 minus 4 y square is equal to 0 because x is set to be 0 here. So, we have 1 minus 4 y square 0 where we will get 1 is equal to plus minus 1 over uh, 2. So, in this case when we set x 0 there we have two possibilities from the second equation to set to 0 either y is equal to 0 will make this 0 or along with this x is equal to 0 if we take y is equal to plus uh, half or minus half that will also be 0. So, basically we are getting the two uh, three points in fact. So, the 0 0 is one point and then uh, 0 plus half another point and 0 minus half another point. So, there are three points here which can uh, make this f x and f y both 0 with this possibilities and now we have another one. So, if y is 0 from the second equation which is making this derivative 0 from the first now we can get uh, when we set y to 0 here. So, we will have 4 minus this 4 x square is equal to 0. So, we will get x is equal to plus minus 1. So, these are the other points with y 0. So, we have plus 1 0 and minus 1 0. So, another uh, points will be 1 0 and then we will have uh, minus 1 and 0. And now, if we try to make this and this term 0. So, what we will get from the first equation we are getting 4 uh, is equal to 4 x square plus y square. Well, from the second equation we are getting uh, 16 x square and plus 4 uh, y square correct 16 x square plus 4 y square. So, if we uh, take a close look. So, here if we uh, take this 4 common. So, it will be 1 by 4 there and the right hand side this 4 x square plus y square. So, we cannot get any solution out of these two equations because first equation says 4 x square plus y square is equal to 4 while the second says that uh, 4 x square plus y square will be 1 by 4. So, we cannot get a solution out of this uh, system. So, we got all these points uh, 1 was 0 0 and 0 plus minus half and plus minus 1 0. So, at all these points we need to further investigate. So, as discussed so we have these 1 2 3 4 5 these 5 critical points uh, or the points where both the derivatives vanish and now we have to discuss for each critical point that whether it is a point of local minimum or it is a point of local maximum or it is a critical point. So, that there we have to use the sufficient conditions that were discussed before. So, moving uh, next now. So, we have this f x and we need to get the second order derivative to further investigate uh, these points for uh, the extrema. So, to again we have to get the derivative of this function. So, once again we have to differentiate this with respect to x and then we can get this uh, term because there will be now many terms. So, if we can I will show you just for this one the next we will directly write. So, here again the product root will be applicable. So, we will do here uh, 2 times e power minus this x square minus 4 square we will take as uh, the first function and then the derivative of the second with respect to x. So, that would be 4 and then we will have minus here uh, 12 x square and then here minus uh, y square. So, with respect to x and then plus. So, here this 2 times again this uh, term will remain 4 x minus 4 x cube and minus x y square and we will differentiate uh, this first term. So, which will be e power minus x square minus 4 y square and then minus 2 x term when we differentiate this minus x square minus 4 y square. So, in this case we will take this common 2 e power minus x square and minus 4 y square. From here we have 4 minus 12 x square minus y square. Here we have taken this common here 2 times the x. 
So, we will get this minus 2 minus 2. So, here uh, this is 4. So, minus 8 x then we will have here 8 x cube and then we will have this plus uh, 2 x y square and this is already taken care well. So, here the x was there. So, we have x square term and then here uh, since this is x. So, x 4 will be there and this x will make this x square y square. So, this is the term here we have the 4 then we have a uh, x square term. So, 8 x square and then this is 12 x square. So, which makes 20 x square then we have x 4. So, 8 x 4 we have minus y square and then we have this 2 x square y square term along with this 2 e minus x square and minus 4 y square. So, this is the derivative the second order derivative with respect to x which is already written there and then we need to compute the other derivatives as well. So, the mixed order derivative. So, with respect to x and y and then uh, also the derivative with respect to y 2 times. So, here we have the f y from the previous slide and then we can differentiate this with respect to x here with the idea which we have just discussed above. So, we will get this term here and then uh, we need to differentiate this once again with respect to y to get the f y y the second order derivative with respect to uh, y. So, this is f y and when we differentiate this to get this t uh, we will get uh, this term now with exponential function and this expression 1 minus 20 y square minus 16 x square 128 x square y square plus uh, 32 y 4. So, we have three equations now this is for three expressions. So, here for the r and then we have the s the second order derivative the mixed derivative and then we have the second order derivative with respect to t. So, with the help of these uh, derivatives we will uh, investigate further whether this point is a point of maximum or it is a point of minimum or it is a settled point. So, now as discussed we have this r s and t these three expressions. So, we will now identify these points. So, the first point remember it was 0 0. So, at this 0 0 point we will compute r s and t. So, for r this is uh, when x and y both are 0. So, we have 0 term there. So, we have 4 this e power uh, 0 this becomes 1. So, we have 4 into 2 this is 8. So, r is 8 and this when 0 0 we substitute here in s. So, this these terms are 0 now. So, we have minus 17, but here the x y is sitting in the product. So, the s will become 0 and in this case again we will have some non 0 numbers. So, all these terms uh, will be 0 we have 1 there and 2 uh, multiplied by 1. So, this will be 2. So, we have at this point r is 8, s is 0 and t is 2 at the point 0 0 this we have taken the first critical point uh, among all these critical because for each we have to uh, identify whether it is a point of uh, maximum, minimum or a settle point. So, this point we have computed all these higher order derivatives and then we have to compute r t minus s square. So, r and t this product is uh, 16 minus s square 0. So, we have this 16 which is positive and remember in the sufficient conditions we have seen that if r t minus s square is positive and r is positive then this is a point of local uh, minimum. So, we got this point of local minimum. So, 0 0 the function has a local minimum. And uh, now we will consider the other points. So, for the second point this was uh, second and third point. So, 0 plus half and 0 uh, minus half. Since this y uh, appears in all these expressions in the even power. So, we can uh, deal this together because whether we take the plus sign there or the minus sign 
the y power uh, even will have the same number. So, we can consider this two, these two points together. So, we are now discussing point number 2 and point number 3. So, 0 and plus minus half. So, in this case we need to again compute this r. So, x is 0. So, these terms. So, what we will get here 2 times. So, r will be 2 times and then we have exponential function x is 0 and uh, y square is 1 by 4. So, here you will get e power minus 1 and then here we have 4 then minus this is 0 here also 0 x is there only this y square term will survive. So, here we will have 1 over 4 and then here again x that will become 0. So, what do we get here e power minus 1 and then here 15 over this 4. So, this 2 also gets cancelled. So, we get 15 over 2 e. So, 15 over 2 e that is the value of r at this point. So, that is a 15 over 2 e. Similarly, we can compute now this s and also t just by substituting this 0 and plus minus half. So, when we substitute in this s, since there is a term x and y here in the product, so when x is 0, the whole term will become 0. So, the s is straightforward 0. And the t again we need to substitute this uh, y square here and all these terms, these two terms have x. So, they will vanish and here we have this y 4. So, these terms when we uh, uh, solve this, we will get this minus 4 over e and this r t minus s square. So, r t when we make this product. So, since the minus sign is there with the uh, t, we will get this minus 30 by e square. So, this time now this r t minus s square is negative. So, negative means as per the sufficient conditions, now this will be a saddle point. So, these point number 2 and point 3 is 0 plus half and 0 minus half, they both are the saddle points with our uh, sufficient conditions we are able to, to identify that these two points are the saddle points. Now, the last uh, here the 4 5 we have plus 1 and 0 and minus 1 0 these two points again we can deal together because the x also appears in the power either is square or we have the 4. So, this value whether we take plus and minus will remain the same. So, when we compute r, so we need to substitute y to 0 here. So, these two terms will go to 0 and then we have here again this uh, e power this is 0 and then you have 1 there. So, e power minus 1 again the same. So, which will come in the denominator and then after simplifying this we will get 16. So, here r is minus 16 over e square and the s is 0 because of uh, here y is there in the expression. So, we will get 0 and t will be minus 30 over e from this expression here. So, again this r t uh, minus s square we have to to compute and in this case so r t here we get this positive again. So, 480 over e square and now based on this sign of r we can decide whether this is a point of maximum or minimum. So, in this case the r is negative and remember when r t minus s square is positive and r is negative then we have a point of maximum. So, in this case these uh, two points plus 1 0 and minus 1 0 these are the points of local uh, maximum. And now uh, we move to the next problem which is uh, the function here f x y is equal to y square plus x square y and plus x 4 we want to discuss for local uh, extrema. So, in this case we will again compute the first order partial derivative which is f x is equal to here 2 x y and 4 x cube will come and then we have the partial derivative with respect to y. So, here 2 y and plus x square. So, we have the partial derivative and to get the stationary point. So, we need to solve uh, these two equations that means the f x uh, is equal to 0 and this f y is equal to 0. So, from here we have this x into uh, 2 y plus this 4 
uh, x square and f y is equal to 0 we will get uh, when we set to 0 that means 2 y n plus x square is equal to 0. So, out of these two equations uh, we need to get all the points which satisfy uh, these two equations. So, from the first immediately we see that x equal to 0 satisfies at least there is a point here x is equal to 0 which satisfies this one. So, corresponding to this when x is equal to 0 here what will be the value of y uh, from the second equation because we are looking for all the points which satisfy both the equations together. So, here x is equal to 0 makes this f x 0 and then when x is 0. So, y has to be also 0 from the second equation. So, we got this one point now x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Now, we have to also look for any other possibility which can make these two terms 0. So, here either x is 0 or the second term here is 0 that means the 2 y and 4 uh, x square is 0 and together with this 2 y uh, plus x square has to be 0. So, again out of these two equations we see that uh, the only number which satisfy only point which satisfy these two equations 2 y plus 4 x square x square is equal to 0 and this 2 y plus x square is equal to 0 the only point is 0 0 again. So, we are not getting any other point than 0 0. So, a stationary point in this case is 0 0. So, at this 0 0 point we have to now discuss uh, for the identification whether this is a point of local maximum or it is a point of local minimum. So, for that we need to compute now the second order derivatives. So, f x x at 0 0 point. So, what will be f x x now? So, this was f x. So, this f x x will become uh, with respect to x again. So, we will get 2 y and we will get here 12 x square and at 0 0 point. So, again here we have the x and y term. So, this will become 0 and if we compute here f x y which also needed. So, with respect to y here we will get 2 x term and then f uh, y y we will get 2 because here when we differentiate with respect to y we will get 2 there. So, now if we compute this r at 0 0 point this will be 0 the s at this uh, the mixed order partial derivative at 0 0 point this will be also 0 because x is sitting here. And then at uh, this point again this f y y this is 2 there is no x and y term. So, this is 2 and then so, what we have r t minus s square we need to compute r t minus s square. So, this is r and t here. So, this will be 0 and minus s square 0. So, we have this r t minus s square and in this case the test fails. So, we cannot conclude anything based on uh, this uh, r t minus s square or the second order derivative test and we have to find some other ways to conclude if we can that what is this point uh, 0 0. So, this test fails, but we can easily uh, identify this point whether uh, it is a point of maximum, minimum or a settle point. If we compute now directly the idea was this delta f. So, based on the sign of this delta f we can decide whether this is a point of maximum, point of minimum. So, if it is negative, if it is negative that means this f 0 0 is larger than the points in the neighborhood. So, we have the local maximum at the end this case. If this delta f is um, uh, positive in the neighborhood then this is a point of local minimum naturally and if it changes sign in the neighborhood of this 0 0 point then we will conclude that this is a settle point. So, we will try here now to observe the sign of this delta f directly without going through the, uh, the second order derivative test. So, in many cases this works, but sometimes this is difficult to, to realize the, the sign of delta f directly from the function. So, in this case perhaps it is possible. So, when we have this f h k minus f 0 0, f 0 0 is 0. So, this f h k will be just simply this y will be replaced by k and this is h square uh, k and then here h uh, will be replaced by this h. So, here we have uh, h power 4 for this x 4. So, we have this 
value of this delta f in the neighborhood of this point 0 0 and then we can make uh, we can rewrite this term as so the first term if you look at so we have k by 2 and h square whole square so what we are getting out of this whole square k square by 4 so there is a term here that's discussed so the k is square by 4 and we have h4 term and then we have a k h square term and then this is 3 by 2 k square so this k uh, is square by 4 and then here we have uh, this k square was 3 by 2 uh, k square. So, these will be so here we can combine these two terms to get this 4 and then we have 1 there and this will become. Uh, so, this would be uh, 3 by 4. So, this is here 3 by uh, 4 instead of 2 we have the 4 there. So, 3 by 4 and this 1 by 4 will make uh, exactly this k square there and we have h 4 and we have k into h square. So, this is just 3 by 4 k square there. So, now we will uh, 3 by 4. So, now we can try to get the behavior based on this term here which is clear because when h and k both are non zero. So, 1 can be 0 we will be still in the neighborhood, but we cannot set both to 0 together. So, if one of them is non 0 for example, k is non 0. So, here we have something positive and here also we will have positive this is a square there. If h is non 0 again this can be 0. So, h is the again this will be a positive term. So, for as long as both h and k are not 0 they can be negative positive does not matter, but this term here for uh, h either h is non zero or k is non zero or both are non zero this term will remain positive and what does that mean that in the neighborhood whatever point we take and however small this neighborhood is this delta f is positive delta f is positive so in this case if this is positive that means in the neighborhood the function is taking more values the larger values and then this uh, 0 0 has to be a point of uh, local uh, minimum. So, this 0 0 is a point of local minimum. So, it was easier in this case uh, because the test fails, so be, but it was a sufficient condition. So, we could not get any sufficient condition which can uh, tell us about this local minimum, but this function was very easy to to uh, discuss directly the behavior and we realize that whatever point we take in the neighborhood the function uh, this delta f will be positive and hence this is a point of local minimum. So, we will discuss one more example here f x y is equal to 2 x 4 minus 3 x square y plus y square it is a similar to the earlier example. So, we will compute f x f y and then the stationary point again and we will find that there is only one stationary point that is a 0 0 in this case also similar to the earlier problem. And when we compute this f x x uh, from here we will at 0 0 this will become 0 because the term will x or y term will survive there and uh, when we compute this f x y. So, again here uh, this uh, 6 x will come and at 0 0 point this will be 0 and when we compute f y y. So, we differentiate this with respect to uh, y again. So, we will get 2 and similar to the previous case we have r t minus s square. So, this test fails again and we will use the same idea similar idea what we have done before. So, we will compute this delta f now the point in the neighborhood minus this f 0 0 which will come exactly that function 2 h 4 minus 3 h square k plus this uh, k square. And in this case, uh, we will uh, do again little manipulation here. So, minus 3 h square k, we have written this minus 2 h square k and minus h square k. And then we take common from the first two terms, the 2 h square. So, here we will get h square and minus k and then minus k from here we will get h square minus k. So, we have the product of h square minus k into 2 h square minus k and now we 
we will discuss how to identify the sign of this delta phi whether we have a definite sign either positive or negative at all the points in the neighborhood of this point or the sign changes. So, first possibility we will take that if uh, this k is negative for example. So, if k is negative irrespective of whatever our h is. So, as long as this k is negative this term will be positive here minus k term here also minus k term will be positive. So, whatever h is h may be 0 or h may be non 0, but when k is negative this product is going to be positive. So, we have this delta f positive in this situation when k is negative. Now, we will see the other situation actually in this case that the delta f can be also or delta f is negative in the neighborhood how whatever close you go to uh, the uh, h is equal to 0, k is equal to 0 and this delta f uh, will be negative. So, here we have seen that for k less than 0 delta f is positive and in the other possibilities we will choose our h and k such that the k is bigger than h square and less than 2 h square. So, by choosing this, so we are not restricting our neighborhood, we can go uh, as close as to this 0 0 point meaning h 0 and k 0 point having this path here h square uh, this k should be greater than h square and less than 2 h square. So, if we choose our h and k point in the neighborhood which satisfies this inequality what will happen? This h square is smaller than the k. So, k is larger this is a negative number and then 2 h square is bigger than k. So, this is a positive number. So, this negative positive will make it negative now. So, in the neighborhood when this h and k satisfies these points then we have this delta f negative. So, what we have observed this is interesting that in the neighborhood of this 0 0 point we realize that this delta f is positive and also this delta f is negative. So, it is changing sign in the neighborhood of this 0 0 point and that means this 0 0 is a settled point. So, again we were able to identify this point here the 0 0 point and this comes to be the settle point and which was not possible with the second order uh, test, but the direct observation uh, we can find that this is a settle point. Well, so this is uh, again a simple problem of uh, this maximum and minimum uh, of this function over a triangular plate in the first quadrant which is bounded by this uh, 0 x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 9 minus x line. So, this is the domain of uh, the problem uh, the bounded domain here because these x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 9 minus x they are the boundaries here this is 9 0 point this is 0 9 point. So, we have to now in this case we have to consider the interior and also the boundary. So, when we have the a bounded domain we have to consider uh, because this uh, maximum minimum may exist at the boundaries. So, these interior points so uh, that means leaving the boundary now. So, at interior points we will search for the stationary point and separately we will handle or we will look uh, for the extrema at the boundaries. So, the stationary point for this problem we can easily compute f x and f y and they come to be 1 and 1. So, this here is the stationary point in the domain of, uh, or, or, the, or in the interior of this domain excluding the boundary. So, we have to consider this point because we can have local extrema at this interior point, but in this problem we, our interest is to find absolute maximum and minimum. So, definitely we will test at this point uh, what is the value of the function later on. So, we have one point and then the boundary points we have to look. So, along this O A line here, so y is 0. So, we can set in our f x as y 0. So, f will be 2 plus 2 x minus x square and x varies from this 0 to 9. So, this is a one variable problem and we can look again for the critical point uh, which is by differentiating this function with respect to x. So, which comes to be at x is equal to 1 there might be a, a point of local maximum or minimum. We do not have to actually go for the identification. So, there will be few points 
uh, where the maxima minima can appear and then we will get the function value at those points and from there we can conclude which is the maximum value and which is the minimum value. So, here this is a stationary point in this one dimensional problem. So, the possible candidates for this extrema because again for this uh, problem now we have the boundary points 0 and 9. So, we have to also consider 0, 0 points and 9 0 point and 1 this at x is equal to 1 which is a stationary point for this problem. So, we have 3 points we have the 0 0 points which is the boundary of this one dimensional problem and here we have the 9 0 point and we have the 1 0 point. So, these are the 3 points. Similarly, along this uh, OB line we have to search now here along this line x is equal to 0 we can set in f x y function. So, again this is a problem of one variable we have to look for the stationary point and along this uh, boundary here we have the 0 0 this boundary point which was already taken earlier we have 0 9 point and from here by differentiating this we will get the stationary point as 0 uh, 1. So, we have these three stationary points uh, I mean these three candidates for for uh, extrema. Similarly, we have to do again this third boundary y is equal to 9 minus x. So, we will substitute y is equal to 9 minus x into f x y. So, we will have again a problem of one variable we have to look for uh, the interior point there. So, f x is equal to 0 we will get only one point which is 9 by 2 and uh, 9 by 2. So, this is the point there and obviously, these boundary points which are already been taken care of by the earlier problem. So, we have so many uh, points here the 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 points where the function may take the maximum or the minimum value. So, we have to consider the interior and we have to also consider the boundaries when we have a closed and the bounded domain. So, here these points we will evaluate simply the function because our interest is to find the global maximum minimum we do not have to identify each of this point for local maximum or minimum. So, at 1 1 the function f x y is taking value 4 and 0 0 it is taking 2 and so on. So, here we have computed all these values at these points and then we realize ok this minus 16 which is the which uh, the function takes at 9 0 and 0 9 point is the minimum among all and this 4 is the maximum one at 1 1 point. So, the function takes maximum at the interior here at 1 1 point and it takes the minimum at 9 0 uh, or 0 9 point which is the value is minus 61. So, this was a problem with bounded domain the earlier problems were in the open domain. So, where we have not considered the boundaries because there were no boundaries in the problem, but this here we have to if there is a boundary the domain is closed then we have to also look for the boundaries because maximum and minimum may occur on the boundaries which is the case here like minimum is at 9 0 or 0 9. So, the conclusion here that maximum and minimum can occur only at the boundary points of the domain that is a 1 and the second the critical points which we have to look for the possible candidates for maximum and minimum. So, these are the references and uh, uh, thank you very much.